Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 28th. It's a cold day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. I don't care because I got a lot of work to do today. I'm not going to be going out much. Uh, so, such is life. But I'm taking a break, uh, enjoying my one of my Briar Spirit pipes. And I am smoking, not on the bookshop. Fusilier's Ration. Um, this is a Russellette blend. Uh, was originally a his take on Bengal slices, and of course, Russ later worked with uh, Standard Tobacco to reintroduce Bengal slices. And I was a fan of Bengal slices back in my a lot of Kia days when it was you know freely available, and I smoked a lot of it. And I can say that the, the, the reintroduction of it, you know, to the best of my ability to remember what a tobacco tasted like 20 plus years ago, it, it has been that long. The new Bengal Slices is very, very similar to, to what I remember. This is actually also similar, but somewhat different and very nice in its own right. It's um, Cyprian Latakia, but with uh, Virginia, a little bit of Oriental, and there's some Black Cavendish in there, unsweetened Black Cavendish. And there's some topping that I can't identify. But it's that... I, it's just it's difficult for me to put my, my finger on what it is. I think it's probably a number of things and it's it's an old flavor. That that's all I can say. It's uh but very good stuff. Scratching my recent Latakia itch. And by the way, in case you don't know, I, I Used to smoke a lot of Kia. I used to smoke English blends pretty much exclusively, and then I discovered Burley, and I kind of lost my taste for a lot of Kia. And many times, I, I I will you know load a ball of something English, and I'll just like ah, I can't smoke this. Uh, but for some reason, uh, once a year or so, I get this itch, and I enjoy it, and I'm really enjoying this uh, Fusilier's Ration. I, I've also been really enjoying the Black Frigate that I had on uh, on Friday night. I mostly do this once a year just to confuse Everett Young. So, uh, yeah. Just teasing Everett. Ah, so, I wanted to give you an update on the giveaway, which is... Uh, going really well. We got, uh, I haven't counted, but I think we've got about eight entries right now. Fantastic videos. The topic is very open. You know, I want, wanted you to talk about a time when a friend was important in your life. Um, and folks have taken that in many different directions, and, I, and I'm really enjoying VRs. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. The prizes, I've got them all here now. So, and they're somewhat out of reach. So, you've all seen the Larry Blackett uh, Father Christmas tamper, beautiful um, tamper, very hefty, great, great. I, I'm going to buy one of these for myself. Keeping in the Christmas theme, we've got a tin of Cornell and Deal We Three Kings. This is an aromatic blend. I don't know much about it. Uh, I had it years ago, uh, and I'm assuming this is the same thing. Uh, inspired by the first widely popular Christmas carol written in the U.S., We Three Kings alludes to the Magi who traveled to the Nativity bearing exotic spices and treasures, de delivering rich black Cavendish with equal measures of mature red and bright Virginias and specially sourced Katerini Turkish leaf. This magical holiday mixture delights with notes of allspice, cinnamon, and vanilla. That actually sounds good, except I'm afraid that I would not enjoy the topping. Uh, but that Caterini is a really, really interesting leaf. I, I really enjoy what Cornell and Deal does with the Caterini. So, if you'll win this. You'll win the tamper. 
two ounces of Northwoods. Boswell's Northwoods. Uh, I put it in the jar just so it doesn't dry out. I will be putting it into a baggie when it gets sent to you, but nice crossover blend English aromatic. And I just got this in from Eddie Gray. Um, uh, this is a Rossi, I believe it's an 8311. Nice poker. This is not a filter pipe, just a standard. But uh, nice but I like the I like the grain on it. Wouldn't mind having one of these in my collection, but I've got the Savinelli 311, uh, which is, you know, the same pipe, just uh, somewhat different in, in the aesthetics. So that will be coming along, and I will repackage this in the vault that Eddie Gray sent it in. I, if you've ever ordered anything from the Pipe Nook, I think Eddie spends four hours packaging each box because <laughs> getting them open is, is, a, is a real trick. Uh, so that's the four the four items for the giveaway: the Tamper, We Three Kings, Northwoods, and the the Rossi Poker. So plenty of time. The drawing is going to be this time next Sunday. So all your entries have to be in by midnight on Saturday. Midnight on Saturday, going into Sunday. Uh, I have a playlist that is titled something like 2021 Holiday Giveaway. In fact, I think it's titled exactly that. If you've entered and you're not on that list, I don't know about your entry. So send me a note. Let me know that you entered because I, I, I only know if you put a comment and I might have missed the comment. So if you if you have an entry and you're not on the giveaway list, or you're not in the playlist of the VRs, uh, let me know. And guys, watch the playlist of the VRs. They are fantastic. And, and you know, if you're not subscribed to those folks, get subscribe to them because they're all very good channels and I think you'll enjoy them. So that's where we're at with that. Um, so the, the main thing I wanted to talk about today is, is a little offbeat for me. And that is the art of not caring. The subtle art. I, I, I'm thinking about this today because I watched a video this morning and I'm not going to call this person out. But he seems to be he seems to be struggling. I think he he wants to be part of the community but at the same time he's trying to distance himself from the community. And I think he feels like he's not accepted, but he's, he's said things that makes it very difficult to reach out to him. And this is, this has bothered me because I like the guy. He seems like he's, he's talented. He, he has, you know, some good content. I, I think he, he, I, I'm, I'm glad that he is a part of the community, whether he knows it or not. But I think he feels like he's an outcast, and that's unfortunate. And one of the things he said in this video this morning, and I've, I've heard people say this quite often, uh, which is why I bring it up. Is, you know, he said, well, you know, I'm not one of the big guys. I, I, I don't have a thousand subs or whatever, but I don't care. Well... If you don't care, why are you saying it? When you point to that, you're actually saying you do care. And you know, you're probably carrying around some resentment over that. You know, the truth is it takes time. It just takes time. And the only way to get more subscribers to to to, to build your subscriber base is to make good content. That's the number one way. You know, make good content. It doesn't have to be spectacular. It just has to be friendly. And, you know, engage. 
Leave comments on people's uh, channels. Leave leave nice comments on people's channels. <laughs> I say that because this guy has left some nasty ones on mine, <clears throat> but we smoothed it out. We're we're good. I hope we're good. So if you do, really don't care about something, you don't care about it. You know that's the bottom line. If you're talking about it. You know, it would be crazy for me to right now say I don't care about this guy because I obviously do. I obviously do. And, you know, I care about all the folks out there. But when one is sort of hurting, sounds like a strong term, but I don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to him. I want to help him, but I don't know how. So this brings me to a book I read um, <clears throat> a couple years ago now, and the book was by a fellow named Mark Manson, just like uh, Charles, but Mark. Uh, Mark Manson, and it, it was titled The Subtle Art of Not Giving a... He did have an asterisk in place of the U in that word. Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. It is a fantastic book. Um, we do, just because of human nature, we do wind up caring about things, deeply caring about things, and getting emotionally entangled in things <clears throat> that we have no control of. And that brings us down. That hurts us. You know, I know I know someone right now that is so for those of you that aren't paying attention <laughs> politics in the US right now is really really terrible um, <clears throat> and I just I've turned it off completely you know the, there's all kinds of shenanigans shenanigans going on with the election process and it, it's just a mess but anyway uh, I have faith in the system. I think it will right itself. I think we will see that. I think we've already seen evidence of it. And I, I think we're going to be just fine. You know, if we've been through worse, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. But I have a friend that is absolutely paralyzed by this. He has wrapped himself so deeply into politics that he can't cope with anything you know everything he sees in some ways relates to politics now and you know just drop it you know you gotta live you gotta live i was talking to him the other day and and he's i'm not going to go into detail about it but he's basically struggling with a political principle that's preventing him from having a relationship with someone, a woman, a, a girlfriend. And I said, look, you know, po political principles are great, but at some point you have to realize that if you're clinging to these things so tightly that they're preventing you from being happy, let go. You deserve to be happy. It doesn't mean that you go against your principle. It just means that maybe you don't hold everybody to the same standard that you're holding yourself to. You deserve to be happy. And that's really a big part of this whole thing. You know, you why do you care? Why do you care about that thing that's preventing you from being happy? Maybe you do. You should care about it. You know, maybe uh, you're sick and you're, you're, you're all tied up in the fact that your health isn't good. And, and that's, well, that, that's a, you know, that's not something you get to set aside. But think about what you can control. Think about what's actually in your power to change. And don't let the things that are outside of your circle of influence make you unhappy. You know, maybe there's, there's someone very close to you that's decided to, to do something that you think is wrong. You know, maybe just illogical, maybe morally wrong. 
you can tell them that. You know, you you can you can tell them that what you're what they're doing is wrong, but you can't stop them from doing it. And if you're going to get yourself so tied up emotionally in the fact that they're doing that, you're going to be unhappy right along with them. You got to step back. You got to say to them, "Look, you're my friend. You're my relative. You're. You know, I love you. What what you're doing is wrong. These are the reasons it's wrong." You do what you're going to do, and then you step back, and you pray for that person, you care for them, you continue to love them, but, but you can't live through them, and you can't let their actions bring you down. This is a hard lesson to learn. You know, it's something that we struggle with. It's something that I've seen people very close to me struggle with. You know, my mother, who passed away, gosh, it's got to be... I should know how many years. I think it's been about ten years. Um, yeah, I loved her dearly. She was my mom. She loved me dearly, but she spent most of her life living in fear of what other people thought, what other people would do. You know, if I if I went away for a weekend, she was constantly worried about me. Um, when I moved away, uh, I had to. For, for like two years after I moved away, I had to call her every day or she would be, you know, just in a, in a state. And it's a good example of, you know, living through other people. And of course, mothers do that and fathers do that. It's, it's hard not to, I know. I don't know personally, but I understand. But at some point you have to say, what is this doing to me? How is this affecting my happiness? And if you're unable to achieve happiness because of some, what somebody else is doing, why do you care? Put it aside. It's hard. So I'm, I'm saying this with this one person in mind who I, I do really appreciate and enjoy, and I hope that they can learn to not give an F. Uh, others, you might enjoy this book. It, it really was, and, and by the way, it, it does use that word throughout the book. So if that word bothers you, don't, don't buy it. But it really was, um, I'm not going to say transformative because, you know, it wasn't, but it was, um, it opened my eyes to to a way of looking at something that you know I already knew about. I knew you can't make other you can't make other people do what you want to do, and you can't you can't control things outside of your circle of influence. But you also shouldn't let those things control your happiness. That that's really the the, the bottom line. So, my friend, I hope I, I doubt you're watching this, but <laughs> if you are, I hope that you can see your way clear to not worrying about those things that you can't control and just being you and bringing what you bring, which is something that I value highly. The one problem with Fusilier's ration, which you probably noticed, is it is a bit difficult to keep lit, especially if you're talking. But it's, it's delicious. Um, goes very good with black coffee, which I'm also enjoying. It is a crumble cake, by the way. It's, it's, it's sliced. It's a sliced crumble cake. So you get these flake-like pieces, but they fall apart very easily. Just rub it between your fingers and, and put it in, and it, it's ready to smoke. I don't think it would benefit from drying time. I think it's just slow burning, and uh, it's not really moist. It's just slow burning, and that's nice because then I think that's one of the reasons I like it. And one of the reasons I like Black Frigate, by the way, I think you know, a ribbon cut English blend burns too fast for me. And I get this very sharp flavor off the lot of Kia. These slower burning blends, uh, these, these crumble cake type blends, it burns slower, and I can enjoy I get the smokiness, I get a little bit of that leatheriness that I haven't tasted in a long time at lot of Kia. It slows it down, and 
to me, it's more reminiscent of the old blends I used to enjoy that were probably Syrian Latakia. Didn't have as much of that sharp edge to it. Um, but this is a fantastic blend. I highly recommend it. If, if you're an English smoker, I highly recommend it. If you're somebody that just dabbles in Latakia, you'll probably enjoy it. Fuselier's ration. And by the way, it does contain nicotine. Well, I've said pretty much everything that I was hoping to say today. I Oh, there is one more thing. This Friday, I need your help. This Friday night for the live stream, I'm doing something, and this may not work out at all. I want to do bad joke night. I basically want to um, tell bad jokes and have you guys tell bad jokes. So the, the way I'm doing that is uh, you can put them in the comments. You can put it in the, in the chat during the, the live. You can put them in the comments to, to any of my videos, and I'll copy them and I'll read them. Uh, you can send me an email, canerodpiper at gmail.com. Tell me your bad joke. Um, it doesn't have to be bad. It just, you know, I'm talking about what some people call dad jokes. Um, I'd give an example, but well, what, what do you call, what do you call an alligator that wears a vest? An investigator. Um, yeah, those kinds of things. They're, they're fun. They're, they're, they're sort of funny, but they're fun, you know, silly. I would like to keep it family friendly. You know, I'll just... Don't don't send me a joke that you would be embarrassed to tell yourself, okay? And uh, I'll filter as needed. But it's good. I hope it's going to be fun. So far, I've gotten exactly one joke, so it might be a very short show. So please send me your jokes. I need them. And uh, and join us on Friday night. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. I, I think it's going to be a fun time. And we'll do all the stuff we normally do. It won't just be jokes, you know. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a, my, my friend uh, Armchair Piper Ed said that he liked the, uh, when I did the theme show, the um, pipe restoration focused show, he said he likes that. So I thought, oh, let me let me try another one. So we'll do Bad Joke Night and see how that goes. We're going to do pipe restorations maybe once every three or four months. So we'll, we'll do that again. Uh, yeah, we'll just have fun with it. Anyway, hope to get your jokes, hope to get your VRs for the giveaway. Uh, deadline is coming up a week from today, minus a few hours. Hope to see you on Friday night, and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. So until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.